Maricar Aguilos of NC State University, and this is our study. The amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere provides a very important control on the global climate system. Forests are very important in terms of the global carbon cycle because they contain about as much carbon as does the atmosphere. How harvesting influences the amount of carbon storage in forest is fairly well understood for upland systems, but much less well understood for lower coastal plain ecosystems. At least to understand the exchange of carbon between the land surface uh, and the atmosphere are crucial. Timber companies worldwide advocate for sustainable forestry to ensure that future generations will have forests to meet their needs and values. Most of them show that it is possible to harvest and replant on a continuous cycle. However, commercial harvesting posts a considerable impact to CO2 exchange between the forested land and the atmosphere. Yet, this has not been fully explored. The effects of harvesting on forest carbon balance are relatively well known for upland systems. However, understanding the impacts of tree harvesting on lower coastal plain forest carbon cycling is still in its infancy. It is interesting to study the carbon budget in coastal plains because of how low its topographic position is, high water table, and threats by extreme weather events, sea level rise, and climate change. In our pursuit to examine the carbon budget in intensively managed Loblolly pine plantations along the coastal plains of North Carolina, we used an eddy covariance system to monitor the carbon fluxes in the atmosphere. Eddy covariance is one of the most accurate and direct approaches for measurement of gas fluxes in real time in situ. This is an example of carbon flux monitoring tower and how eddy covariance system is set up at the top of the tower. It monitors CO2 concentrations and wind speed that passes through the instruments with very high data resolution. Through the system, we can obtain the net ecosystem carbon exchange, which is the difference between the photosynthesis and the respiration at the ecosystem level. This is used to determine whether a forest is a net carbon sink or a net carbon source. This forest is a carbon sink when net CO2 is mostly going inside the forest system and a net carbon source when net CO2 is going away from the system. Therefore, if we suppose we have a mature forest and it is a carbon sink, but suddenly we harvest, thus making it into a carbon source, one question is, how long does it take to regain its status as a carbon sink again? Second, how long will it take to recover all of the emitted CO2 from harvesting during the entire net carbon source period? To answer these, we use two eddy covariance flux towers using the plantation sites of Warehouser and Company in Plymouth, North Carolina. These sites transitioned from newly harvested sites and were planted with two-year-old pine seedlings. These sites contain pines from two to six years old. Another is a rotation-aged pine plantation ranging from 15 to 27 years old. Rotation age means the age at which the plantation is mature enough to be harvested and usually is 25 to 30 years for old loblolly pine. Our results show that forest harvesting causes large sustained losses of carbon to the atmosphere, making the forest a strong carbon emitter as we observed in the newly established pine plantation. This is mainly due to the large amount of woody detritus left on site after harvest that subsequently decomposes. However, the rotation age site was a net carbon sink throughout the measurement period, owing to a larger photosynthetic productivity than the ecosystem respiration. We also found that newly established pine plantations become carbon sinks, or regain their status as a carbon sink, five to eight years after harvest. We were able to recover the total carbon loss due to logging eight to 14 years after harvest. Overall, we found that these plantations have a net carbon uptake only during about half of their 25-year rotation period, possibly decreasing climate mitigation potential in comparison to protecting primary forests. It is very important that we continue and even expand studies of carbon cycling in lower coastal plain forests, both managed and unmanaged forests. These studies will provide better understanding of how the land atmosphere exchange of carbon dioxide will be affected by global climate change, including rising temperature, sea level rise, uh, extreme events such as hurricanes, flooding, and even forest fires. Further, such studies will provide the data needed to parameterize ecosystem models and regional landscape models that will allow robust scenario evaluation of continuing change uh, in environmental conditions.